Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be giving you guys a super quick tutorial showing you some different ways to animate an easy paint tool side. Uh, I want to let you guys know in advance this is not going to be very detailed. I'm not going to go into the tools and so on. I'm just going to give you guys basically a really quick startup. Uh, so to start us off, we actually have uh, two ways that I basically kind of use when animating. And uh, way number one is what you can do is each layer is going to be a frame. So you can go ahead and start drawing. Now, as we know, Easy Paint Tool side doesn't have onion skin. So instead, you go to the opacity of the layer, bring it down, and then you just go on and you continue with your next frame. You can just continue to lower the opacity to whatever you want. You can go ahead and just keep going. So uh, now that this first animation is finished, I'm going to go ahead and call this Ball 1. And you're going to save it as a Photoshop um, file. The reason why is Photoshop files are much more compatible with a lot of different programs. So it's much easier to use. Uh, now I'm going to show you another technique. I'm going to open another canvas. Now uh, this is up to you. This is just another thing you can do. What you can do is use different colors when you're... Uh, doing your animation that way you don't have to adjust the opacity you can just see the different colors and you know which layer is which because you can see right there all the different colors that you're using so you have a good idea of exactly what each frame is I'm just going around the color wheel here as I go ahead and pick my colors Now, I don't really use this way. It's just a way that you can uh, that you can actually get your animation and know which frames are different. It is a bit hard to distinguish, so like I, I don't use this way at all. But this is a way that if it works for you, you can go ahead and just use different colors so you can have an idea which frame is which. We're going to save this one as a ball to and uh, as a Photoshop file once again. Now. We have these two different animations. How do we know what they look like? Like how can we see it? I'm going to show you guys three different ways that you can play this animation. I'm going to show you the hardest way to the easiest way. The easiest way is the way that I use, okay? Now, the hardest way is going to be saving each individual layer as a picture. So what you do is basically you're going to hide all the layers that you don't want and you're going to go to export PNG and uh, you go ahead and you can put one. Now I'll probably skip over this part. All right, now that we have all the frames saved, we're going to go ahead and actually make a folder for these frames and call it ball one. We'll go ahead and just put all the individual pictures into the folder. Okay, so now that you have all your frames in one place, what you can do is you can open Windows Movie Maker and you can go ahead and bring these frames in. Now you can see they're in numerical order. That means as soon as you bring them in, the frames will be in the right order. And you can just go ahead to edit and change your duration to whatever you speed you want it to be. We're going to do this at 0 0.08. So uh, as you can see, all the frames are in Windows Movie Maker. And we can go ahead and play them. And uh, if you want it to loop, you can open it larger and it'll loop for you. And you can see pretty much this is the animation of the ball bouncing. Now, this is a lot of work to go through just to play an animation because then you're going to have to keep doing that over and over again. This is the second way you can do it. Now, uh, this little remar remarkable tool was uh, created by somebody. I'll try to post a link below I definitely want to make sure I credit them this is called Psy animation assistant and basically what it is it's a little add-on that kind of helps you out so you're still gonna have to save 
each individual picture and put them in a folder like I've done here. And once you open up the animation assistant, you go to file and you're going to do a set source folder. Your source folder is going to be ball one. And you're going to hit OK. And then what it automatically does is it brings up all the images. You can set the frame rate. We're going to set it to uh, 12 frames per second, which would be 0 0.08 or uh, on twos. And you can see in the corner it says file type PNG. So bam, instantly it knows everything. Now, uh, I don't use this. It's not something that I actually use. Um, I have seen Melty use it, and that's why I included it in this tutorial, because I'm sure there's other people out there who use it. I personally, the final method is the one that I use. So you can see, after you go ahead and just add the source file, it's going to go ahead and uh, play the bouncing ball. And as you continue to add and edit frames and so on, it's going to continue to update with the folder, which is super nifty. And now we finally reached the third and final way, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this to you. Now, here we are in ball one. We're going to go ahead and open all the layers so you can see the animation all on top of each other. And we're going to go ahead and hit save. Now that our animation is saved, I'm going to go ahead and open Animation Shop Pro. Animation Shop Pro um, is a really nifty program. It has uh, a lot of neat tools and effects and so on that makes animation easy. Basically, you're going to go hit this little thing in the middle there, that icon, and then it's going to bring you to the animation wizard. Now it's going to ask you um, what size you want your canvas as defined here or the same size as the first image. Uh, I stick with the same size as the first image, and the reason why is if you do as defined here, you'll kind of lose the quality, but it's okay for a quick preview if you like. You hit next, it'll ask you if you want to do transparent or opaque. I usually do opaque, that way you can really have like at least a base to kind of see how the animation is looking. Now that it'll ask you like how you want to scale the frames and so on, you can kind of basically leave that the way it is. And then it asks you if you want the animation to be looped, yes, and how long you want each frame to be shown. So uh, for an eighth of a second, that is uh, on twos. Now once you've, you have this the first time, you're not going to have to fill it out each and every time. So you can go ahead, click next, and it's going to ask you to add frames. Now you can either add each individual frame, like in the bouncing ball folder, or you can simply click the Photoshop file and hit next, finish, and bam! Your animation has been imported. Each and every frame is now there. And it was easy as that. You didn't have to save each individual file. It's just right there. And another cool thing is you can go ahead and you can actually change the length of each frame. So you can really play with it, put them on ones, twos, whatever you like. You just hit this icon here and it'll go ahead and play the animation for you. Now, uh, if you need more space, can't really see it, you can go ahead and resize the animation. That way it's smaller. And bam, it's playing right there. And all you had to do was open the Photoshop file. And that's very quick and very simple, very easy. And there you are. Those are three separate ways to preview your animation in uh, easy paint tool Sci. You can use either Windows Movie Maker, you can use Sci Animation Assistant, or you can use Animation Shop Pro. Uh, I personally use Photoshop because I do have Photoshop, but this is a simple, easy way for those of you who don't have Photoshop to animate in Sci. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them below. I hope you guys found it useful once again, and uh, if you have another request, feel free to ask, and hopefully I can help you out. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.